Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent and Canterbury and in this uh, video clip I want to discuss the concept of a confidence interval and usually we mean the confidence interval of the mean. So first of all, uh, what? Well, the confidence interval is related to the standard error of the mean. And I've done a video on this particular topic, so if you want to know more about that, uh, please have a look. It also gives us a sort of a probability or likelihood as to how accurate our estimate of the population param parameter, and in this case the mean, as the population parameter is. So, for example, a 95% confidence interval tells us and that is really the precise definition here. It tells us that if we take 100 samples and we have the same number of observations in each sample, there's a pretty good chance that the confidence interval of the mean of 95 of these samples will include the true population mean. Sounds a little bit esoteric, but hopefully uh, it will become clear. But first of all, we calculate the confidence interval of the mean and uh, it's usually abbreviated as CI, that's the confidence interval and we first of all choose how certain and how sure we want to be and the 95% certainty uh, is usually uh, quite a good and acceptable confidence interval. So this means we want to be 95% sure, or in other words, we are willing to accept a 5% error. And usually this error is uh, called alpha. Now this confidence interval is the mean of our sample, plus minus what I call a sort of an almost a fudge factor. This is called a T or this is also denoted as a T factor. T times the standard error of the mean. And as I said, uh, I've uh, done a video on the standard error of the mean. But we, so uh, we can write this here also as the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of observations. So our confidence interval CI equals the uh, mean of the uh, sample plus minus T times S standard deviation of the sample divided by the number of observations in it. So let's say we have um, an, we have a mean when we measure our say students in the university. Let's say we have a mean of hundred and seventy nine centimeter. We have a standard deviation of let's say 10 centimeters and we had a very small sample. Our observations was uh, very limited. We only picked four students so we have four here. Now for a number of four uh, this t value, this t factor uh, is given as three 0.18. Now, how do you find this uh, T uh, factor? You can look it up in a table or you can use a function in Excel or if you've got a Mac in numbers. So what you type in in this case is Uh, you start an equation and every equation in Excel or in spreadsheets starts with an equal sign and then you type in T I N V bracket. You then put in the 
um, the error that you are willing to accept. So in our case, we said we want to uh, have the confidence interval at 95%. So our error that we are willing to accept would be 5%. So we put the error in, so that would be 0.055%. And we put in the sample size minus 1, n minus 1. So in our case, uh, the equation would look like TINV 0.05,3. Because we've got a sample size of 4, so 4 minus 1 gives us 3, and this gives us the value of 3.18. Now, going back to our equation, so the confidence interval we, we said is x bar plus minus t times s divided by the number of uh, observations that we have. So we would have 179 centimeter plus minus 3.18, that was our t factor, times s, that is our standard deviation, 10 divided by square root of 4. And if we do that, we get 179 centimeters plus minus 3.18 times 5. That gives us roughly very rounded 16 centimeters. So what does this result tell us? With a confidence interval of 179 centimeter plus minus 16 centimeters, we can represent our data as here is the mean 179 centimeters plus 16 centimeters so that would be 195 centimeters and on the other hand 163 centimeters and this means that we can be fairly certain that the height of all students, that the average, the mean height, mean height of students in the, in the University of Kent, for example, uh, will be between 163 centimeters and 195 centimeters. If we did this experiment uh, several times, so for example, I would do another set of four. So I have my first uh, sample. I take four students and I get 179 and a confidence interval of 16 centimeters. I then do another four students. I get 185 confidence interval of 20 centimeters. Do another one, four students, 177 confidence interval of 15 centimeters. And for each of these samples, I can calculate my uh, average anti-confidence interval. Now, if I do that, if I do this 100 times, what I would find is that this would be the confidence interval for the first sample, here would be confidence interval for the second, here, this might be for the third. And if I do that 100 times, so 100 times, I would find that 95 times these confidence intervals would contain my population 
mean, this one here, if that is the population mean. And only five samples, so like this one here, only five samples would not contain the population mean. So the confidence interval gives us a very good idea how good our sampling is when we look at the population um, mean. And what I want you to take home from this video is this equation to calculate the interval. So confidence interval equals the mean of the sample plus minus a t factor times standard deviation divided by the square root of the observation. I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.